Hi, I'm Jessica Patterson from Spinning Shadows Fiber Arts, and I am excited to participate in Tour de Fleece coming up here in, well, tomorrow, on Saturday, July 6th. Um, this will be my first time participating in Tour de Fleece. It is a spinners event where we get together in teams and challenge ourselves and each other to uh, certain goals. Some teams have set goals. Um, I'm a part of the Crafty Misfits, which is run by Erin of Crafty Housewife Yarns. And um, we have, we're pretty laid back, so we have personal and team goals, whichever of which people decide to do. My goals are I hope to um, achieve the team goals. I, I really want to learn from the challenges set forth, uh, which is fractal spinning, uh, spinning from Rolex, and uh, art yarn, uh, one of which is uh, beehives. I have, ever since I started spinning, I've wanted to learn how to do beehives. So I'm super excited about that. Um, for the Rolag challenge, the challenge is to spin fine uh, from Rolags, and uh, I spin fine as a habit. That's my fun spinning, and my default spin, as you would say. I spin super fine yarn as a habit, and uh, so I thought I'd make a video on fine spinning with a few tips um, and a little bit of demonstration. Um, this is a Rolag I've made on a hand carter. You can make them on hand carters or on a blending board. The only difference between a hand carter and a blending board when you're making pure colorful Rolags like this here is uh, less fiber on the hand carter. Um, but they spin just the same and they both make very nice yarn. Um, I've been spinning up scraps of, of Rolags from previous batches I've made for Crafty Housewife Yarns for sale on her website. So this has been a fun little pre-TDF Tour de Fleece uh, exercise. So um, this sort of fell apart, but all you do to spin from a Rolag is just pull from the end here. You don't have to pre-draft. I thought I had to pre-draft, but that turned out to be a large headache that was totally unnecessary. Um, all you have to do is pull from the end and, you know, don't hold it too tightly. Pull and it'll just, it'll keep pulling from that roll as you go, as you spin the yarn. Uh, <clears throat> this here is my Spinolution Polywog. I got it a couple of months ago and have been learning the ins and outs of spinning with a polywog. Um, before this I used an antique flax wheel for spinning and I could spin super fine yarns very, very tightly, but I could only get like an ounce of fiber on the wheel at a time, so this is quite an upgrade for me with the four ounce bobbin. I've got it spinning on the smallest whorl. Uh, on the back, but it could actually, you can actually spin fine yarn on the largest because uh, this can be treadled so fast. Um, I've got the tension set pretty loose, just tight enough to pull it onto the bobbin. Um, and that's about it, about the wheel. Uh, let's get some twist up in here. When spinning fine yarns on a polywog or whatever wheel you're using, one of the main things is getting twist uh, built up in your yarn. Uh, if you don't get enough, it'll not hold together, uh, especially when you're plying. If you under twist the yarn or just like have barely enough to hold it together, when you go to ply that yarn, it's going to slide apart. And 
the magic of plying, you can make it hold together, but um, it'll be a lot less of a headache if you just let that twist build up. Um, as you can see, it's quite energetic yarn here. And uh, it's it just requires a lot to hold together and especially to ply. Now, um, you can let your yarn hang out here for a while and then just draft a little bit and let it, that twist run up and draft a little bit and let that twist run up. You know, it's take your time with it. Don't be afraid to over twist it. Um, I can't stress enough, this yarn, type of yarn, requires a lot to hold it together. And, uh, you know, just take it a little at a time. And draft out like, I'd say two, three inches or less <laughs> when you're just starting. And, uh, you know, you can let it hang out for a little bit here to build up. And then draft and keep going. And uh, fine yarn, uh, it will show up all the little bumps and blubs, and you'll have probably, if you do your first, it will probably have quite a bit of size difference. <laughs> um, but a lot of those uh, <laughs> sins will be covered up in plying, and it'll give your yarn quite a bit of character. Uh, definitely any knots or noils or things will show up like, you know, like a beacon in this kind of yarn. Uh, but it's really, it's really fun. It's, uh, I love knitting shawls with this stuff, and uh, lace work is really just, just my thing. But, um, I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to seeing what everybody's spinning for TDF. I'm really looking forward to starting in on my challenges. It's been quite the temptation to start in on, uh, on spinning my fractal spin and such. But I'm, I'm being good so far and waiting. Um, anyway, I'll see you. See you guys next time. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to my channel. Check me out on Facebook at Spinning Shadows Fiber Arts, where I update with pictures of what I'm doing. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll have a story about one thing or another, like uh, making spindles, where I had a mishap with the super glue. It really is fun. And if you're interested in the spin illusion wheels and spinning fibers, I recommend you check out craftyhousewifeyarns.com. She has all sorts of stuff and spinning courses and just is a great, great lady who answer, who will answer questions you have on these wheels. These are just really, this polywog has been the greatest spinning wheel for me. Um... I'm going to be using this for a long, long time into the future, foreseeable future. Anyway, have a nice day.